Hello comrades and welcome back to the Shanka show. Today we will talk about the first and the last and the only president of Soviet Union, comrade Mikhail Gorbachev. He was elected as a general secretary of Communist Party on March 11, 1985, the next day after the death of Konstantin Chernenko. And as I mentioned in the previous video, see, after seeing how young he was, it was my only thought, man, there will be no more funeral breaks in a while. Mikhail Gorbachev was only 54 year old uh, when he got elected as a general secretary, probably the youngest secretary in a long time. So what do I remember about the years under his rule? Now, first of all, Gorbachev was famous for his birthmark on his forehead. That was like first thing everybody noticed and we had a lot of jokes about it, uh, jokes that he had a bird pooped on him, uh, he got a nickname Mechini, which means the marked one. So there were a lot of jokes only about his uh, birthmark on his head. Also, he was the first Soviet leader that showed his wife, Raisa Gorbacheva. Prior to that, all the Soviet leaders uh, never showed up in public with their wives. And she was the first lady to be real first lady. And of course, many people weren't ready for it. And we also had a lot of jokes about Raiska. That was kind of like a uh, nickname for Raisa Gorbacheva. In 1985, the Soviet Union was probably in its peak, but I would call this peak like the tree finally reached its highest point of growth, but it's already started rotting inside. Uh, because remember in those days, uh, on TV and radio, we hear a lot of good news about the Soviet Union, but then you go to the store and there's nothing to buy, the empty shelves around or huge lines uh, to buy anything, shoes, clothes. Um, you had to be in line, as I mentioned, to be on the list for nine years to purchase a car. Even to purchase a couch or refrigerator, you had to wait uh, being on the list for six months to a year. So Gorbachev started the changes in the Soviet system uh, based on three principles. Perestroika, which means like rebuilding or reconstruction, Uskarenie, which means acceleration, and Glasnost, uh, something like openness and no more secrets. And our life changed a lot. Uh, I remember the suddenly newspapers became extremely interesting to read because there were many articles uh, telling things about the Soviet Union under Stalin or under Khrushchev that we never heard of. Um, and we end up, uh, my family, subscribing to many new uh, newspapers just because there was just a lot of interesting information that we never heard it before. Besides Perestroika, Uskarenie and Glasnost projects, uh, Gorbachev also started a campaign against excessive alcohol consumption in country. Uh, people were drinking a lot of vodka and he decided to put stop to it. So first of all, all the alcohol prices went up 45%, huge jump. Then vodka just disappeared from the stores, period. It was just empty shelves. Then they changed the rules and people were allowed to purchase vodka only after 2 p.m. so no more early morning drinkings and well of course russian people soviet people uh, having this bitter sense of humor came up with a lot of jokes about the situation for example uh, like a little kid approaching his uh, father like dad vodka got so much more expensive does that mean you're gonna drink less he said oh no kid that means you're gonna eat less and of course, if you cannot buy vodka, you start making your own vodka. So all over the country, moonshining exploded, and suddenly as a side effect, sugar disappeared. Government ended up limiting amount of sugar people can purchase per month, so every family was getting a special 
talon piece of paper and every person in the family can purchase only one kilogram of sugar per month one of the dumbest things uh, that happened during this anti-alcohol campaign was massive destruction on vineyards all over the country mostly in georgia armenia and crimea i don't know who made that decision but it was decided we don't need all these vineyards anymore because we're not gonna produce that much wine wine making factories had to switch to producing grape juice and i remember this funny story that my dad told me uh, one time at their factory somebody noticed that the grape juice in the cafeteria wasn't actually grape juice it was wine i guess the factory that was making wine by mistake or who knows why they end up uh, putting wine into grape juice cans and shipping it all over the country so that day the whole factory was walking around happy and drunk and management couldn't figure out what the hell is going on another side effect of anti-alcohol campaign was interestingly a sharp increase in birth of children in Soviet Union in 1985 till 1988 so there was another like a miniature baby boom happening at that time uh, maybe people had a new hopes for the new life coming up with changes or maybe just guys were so bored being sober so they started paying more attention to their ladies Several other big decisions that Gorbachev made during his rule was the hard one of pulling out Afghanistan in 1989 without admitting they lost. Also he pushed the change in the constitution and they removed the article 6 in Soviet constitution which preserved the communist party monopoly rule in this country. He removed a lot of conservatives uh, from the Communist Party. Pretty much he was laying the ground for the major changes in the Soviet Union. So the avalanche of changes in Soviet Union and in the life of Soviet people was quite overwhelming. The first McDonald's opened in Moscow. They had huge lines. It became at once the busiest McDonald's in the world, despite the fact that McDonald meal was costing approximately one monthly salary for the ordinary person but still people were willing to pay this huge money you would say if you compare if you make about two thousand dollars a month here in the USA people would pay two thousand dollars for Big Mac and french fries and coke just to try the taste of West uh, yeah so that was really fun time to live and then Berlin Wall came down uh, Soviet people were allowed to travel abroad it was uh, less and less uh, limitations newspapers were interesting to read uh, markets open up and people were uh, selling their things but you could tell there's something going on uh, because like from some from the stores we had sugar disappeared then flour disappeared then suddenly it was shortage of the glass bottles so we had the vodka being sold as giant three liter glass jars because they couldn't just find enough glass bottles so these little things were kind of popping up here and there telling you there's something seriously going on wrong with the soviet economy and it became really bad when they started delaying uh, salaries at the factories then inflation kicked in and things started to becoming more expensive and I'll probably talk more about those things in uh, in more detail later in my uh, next videos but right now I just want to wrap it up um, the reign of Mikhail Gorbachev in 1991 uh, the leaders of Belarus Ukraine and Russia which Boris Yeltsin was at that time they got together and signed the agreement uh, dissolving the Soviet Union and that's when uh, Mr. Gorbachev 
uh, became from the president of USSR, the president of nothing because Soviet Union disappeared. So that's my short story about the last guy who um, ran Soviet Union. I hope you enjoyed the show. Thank you very much. Goodbye.